Hey, what's up guys? My name is Josh and the embargo for the 38X finally just ended. So your unbox is definitely gonna be full of a lot of reviews. So I'm gonna give you the brief 30 second rundown of this headphone so that you can get to those other reviews if you wanna hop around a lot. I'd love it if you stuck to the end of the video, but if you're just looking for the quick and dirty, here it is. So this headphone is great for gaming and music. It's notably an improvement over the 37X for music, but about on par, in my opinion, for gaming performance. Build and comfort are still really enjoyable. There's an extra pair of pads, an extra cable, and it still has a fantastic best-in-class built-in microphone. Now, I do think this outperforms the gaming performance of most classic gaming headphones. For example, the Logitech G Pro X wireless, the new Lightspeed one, far exceeds that in terms of sound quality, but it lacks some of the features like wireless connectivity, detachable microphones, and software updates. Now, I do think against some audiophile class competitors, for example, the newest and most aggressive competitor to this headphone, I think it's gonna be the HD 560S, also from Sennheiser. This headphone is a little bit clearer, a little bit crispier, a little bit more forward in the treble response, and it's gonna maintain an overall more detailed approach to music, but lacks the lower mid-range warmth, bass response, and soundstage capability that the 38X has. Now, in my opinion, these both go head to head for sound quality. The 38X is actually that good. But if you like a smoother performer or you game at all, I would get the 38X. If you just listen to music and want a little bit faster, more clinical sound, get the 560S. So that's gonna be it for the brief introduction. Hopefully you stick around for the full review. And that starts right now. Now to intro this headphone, I think this is one of the few cases where the upgrade in model actually justifies the upgrade in price. They pretty much took everything, in my opinion, that was great about the 37X and improved it and upgraded it in the 38X. They didn't take anything away in my opinion, but they only added things. And in my book, that actually justifies a price difference. Now in my review of the 37X, I specifically stated that I thought they were amazing for gaming and just okay for music. That is actually different here. I think that the gaming performance is on par with the music performance. And I think that not only as a gaming headphone, but as a music headphone, this is actually pretty competitive in the price category. And we've looked just recently at a few options below $200, the 560S is one of them, the 400i 2020 version, and the new SHP9600. Now for me, the competition between those four headphones gets a little bit sloppy when it comes to music preference. I kind of like all of them equally, but for different types of music. But when it comes to gaming performance, the 38X outperforms all of them. Now the build quality here is almost identical to the 37X for those of you familiar with it. It's got a plastic chassis, Unlike the 37X, this is actually a bit more of an open back design. Instead of having that louver style design over the grills, this is more of a mesh showing the yellow fabric underneath. And that's where the float like a butterfly, sting like a bee metaphor kind of came through, it was the color, but also the performance. Now there are a few key differences besides just the look of it. One is gonna be uh, the transition from one solid pad underneath the headband to the two different pads, allowing the very top of your head to more clear. I actually think this is a superior design. That was one of the things I noted to myself about the comfort of the 37X. Luckily it was light enough to where that top spot wasn't really an issue or worth noting, but this fixes something that was already good into something that is now fantastic. Now internally they did design new drivers that I actually have some opinions on when it gets to the bass performance, but we'll talk about that when we get there. This big rod right here, which is of course the microphone, uh, this is a auto muting microphone where as soon as you, you pull it up and you hear that click, it auto mutes. And then on the right side, you have your volume knob, which it's one of those features where you don't think you're gonna use it, but I find myself using it all the time, even though my amp is right on my desk, right in front of me. This is just so much more convenient. This does come with a carry bag and an extra set of velour pads, but I actually like the stock fabric pads that they have on here. I'm not sure what this material reminds me of, but it's, it's very breathable, it's very plush, and the overall comfort of this headphone is exceptional. So I do want to briefly mention amplification. Uh, I'm actually using a Mayflower Electronics Arc Mark II for this review. This is a unit that outputs both audio and receives audio through the microphone, and it's just simply USB powered. So it's a pretty small and efficient footprint, and it sounds a lot better than onboard audio. There are a number of options like this. I don't know if the additional investment is gonna be worth it to every user, but if you're looking to get that last little bit of both power and sound quality out of the 38X, I think something like this should be considered. Oh, and I will also have a review separately of this coming out shortly. Now the trouble response is something that I would consider to be good, but ultimately just kind of skirting under the line of passable for the price range. There are definitely things that outperform it, like the aforementioned 560S, 
that has a little bit more finite trouble response. Uh, but it's notably not really what this headphone is about, and it actually comes back with a vengeance in some other categories. Now for those 58X owners, the trouble response reminds me a little bit of that headphone because it's detailed, it's not too forward, but it's still present. It doesn't completely ignore the area, and it's still got a decent bit of information that you can capture with these drivers. Now this is notably one of the only categories where I think this headphone actually gets outperformed by music by a decent margin depending on which headphone you go to. Now the mid-range is actually the biggest improvement over the 37X and is the entire reason why I prefer this headphone for music and don't prefer the 37X for music. Now the mid-range is warmer. It's thicker, it's got a little bit more of a kind of inviting sound signature. The vocal response is a little bit more lush and enjoyable and kind of grabs your attention a little bit more, especially in the lower range, but also a little bit notably in the upper ranges. Now this contrasts the 37X, which always felt a little bit thin and was more about staging the vocalist, which this still has, but it didn't have the warmth that this has. And towards my personal preference, this is actually a big step up, but I don't really feel like it was a downgrade in terms of capability when it came to the gaming performance, which again, in my opinion, this shows the benefits of this headphone while not showing any detriments over a previous version. Now the bass response launches me headfirst into by far the biggest complaint I have about this headphone, um, though I'm not sure how much it's actually going to play a role in the units that you guys have and how loud you're listening to your music. So uh, if you remember a while ago, they had the Focal X, also a drop headphone, but the issue with that headphone was typical of Focal themselves. If you play a really, really, really bassy song out of here and you are pushing it loud, the driver will bottom out. You will hear a popping noise. Now with the Alex, which is a very expensive headphone uh, compared to this, uh, you, you pretty much had to push that headphone really, really hard, like, like louder than you should be listening to. Uh, this headphone is still louder than I would listen to on average, but I do know some people who just blast their headphones and you might get some driver popping on really, really bassy music. Now, this is music that is already like uber boosted in the bass response, you know, like plus 20 dB in the bass compared to everything else, that type of music. So if you listen to a lot of that stuff, you know, stuff that they use to show off the subwoofers and cars, that type of music, I don't think it's gonna be well suited for this. Now the Alex, from what I know, it didn't actually affect the longevity of the drivers and the headphones. I'm not sure about this. This could be something that, you know, if you do it a few times over the course of a few months, it would create an issue, but I will give Sennheiser kind of the same uh, benefit of the doubt of having them be an audio company first. They do a absolute uh, ton of research into these products and they probably know about the popping and that uh, it may be specific to my unit even, that may not even be a, a trait of the 38X, but I did want to bring it up either way. I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that this is not going to wreck your headphone, but that is also simply just me affording them the respect that they have built for me personally over time. Now the bass response outside of that, I actually consider to be very good. And it's actually a little bit warmer in the bass response and lower mid range than is typical of Sennheiser, which is nice. And I do like the addition of that. Now it does have a little bit of a mid bass boost. Uh, and normally this actually tends to wreck soundstage, but I actually think in certain cases, this benefits it and doesn't really take away from any of the traditional uh, soundstaging experiences, especially for gaming that I would normally look for. So with that being said, let's talk about imaging and soundstage because this is uh, probably best in class specifically for gaming. And the reason why it's good for gaming is how the soundstage is oriented uh, relative to your position in a game. So with a gaming headphone, what you want above anything is the ability to tell distance and location from any given sound. That, that is paramount for actual raw performance. Enjoyability is a whole separate category. But for raw performance, you want that. So you want something that is very surrounding, very obvious what's in the rear, what's in the front, and kind of everything in between. And you also want to be able to locate distance between you. Now, to be completely candid with you, there's a shitload of headphones that do this, um, like a lot of them. Nowadays, especially audio companies and not so much gaming companies, I'm looking at UG Pro X, are very good at producing this high quality sound staging experience. But headphones like the 37X, the 38X, other higher end headphones like the HD 800S, those really show you that the capability uh, still has a little bit of headroom and can still be improved a lot. So even among very good headphones, this is one of the best, especially for the price for that sort of sound staging. Now this is going to have uh, 
I'm gonna consider it neutral effects on music. For some recordings, this is very, very good. It fits right in line with how they should be delivered to your head. And with other recordings, it's a little bit disappointing, but that tends to be how they are mastered in if they're made for a headphone format or a speaker format or somewhere in between. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about compression because I think compression is, uh, it's very misunderstood. Um, for audiophile headphones, I think you want a little bit of compression. Uh, you don't want a lot, but you don't want an uncompressed sound because a headphone with real dynamics is, you don't want that. You're gonna wreck your hearing in like five minutes because a gunshot with proper real life dynamics is just gonna blow your eardrums legitimately. So that's a bad thing. So I think we can all agree that a little bit of compression is good. It's just a degree of how much uh, to maintain realism. Now I think beyond audiophile headphones, uh, a little bit more compression is actually useful for gaming, specifically because you want the dynamic area between the footsteps and the voices and the gunshots to be relatively in the same ballpark. And this is useful for a competitive advantage of being able to hear footsteps, because if you're leveling for gunshots, which are really, 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 really loud, you're never ever gonna be able to hear uh, the, the footsteps coming. So you want a little bit more compression than a typical audiophile headphone. Now this is somewhere in the balance between what I would consider good for an audiophile headphone at the price and good for a gaming headphone at the price. Now the way that I would kind of describe this in terms of what you hear is that this is a compressed headphone, but it doesn't sound compressed. It still has enough dynamic range to kind of falsify loud sounds and low sounds, but you still have everything in the picture. Whereas some other lower end headphones will take the compression a little bit too far and they sound kind of shrinked and not so great. Now, now I'm gonna do a microphone test against a couple of other mics. So this is gonna be a recording test of the PC38X inbuilt microphone. This microphone suffers from one problem that the standard PC37X suffered from, which is a little bit of a plosive problem. This is also partially due to the lack of a foam cover that comes with it. Uh, and it's also partially due to the fact that a lot of these inbuilt microphones have this problem. I leave it down here to avoid the plosive problem and I think it sounds pretty all right. I have left the window open for this and the mod mic sound test so that you can hear a little bit of the rejection capabilities or not here because of the rejection capabilities ideally of both of these microphones. And then you'll also be able to hear the timbre and texture of my voice. Okay, now the mod mic actually has two different modes. The first mode is gonna be uh, this kind of more condensed, uh, more noise canceling mode and the other one is going to sound a little bit clearer. I placed it around about the same position as I would use the PC38X and then uh, we'll turn this off. There we go. And then this is going to be the slightly uh, less condensed version. It's also a little bit uh, less in terms of volume so I will boost it to match and we should see how it sounds. A quick and dirty review of both of these microphones. I think they are both passable for communication, but they're not going to replace any sort of like broadcast quality systems. Uh, they're not going to replace full scale microphones. They're just something that is convenient for an already inbuilt system. Okay, guys. For my conclusion, you actually have to understand uh, a different headphone entirely, which is going to be the HD800S, which is not a gaming headphone, but it is the best in the world, in my opinion, as a gaming headphone. But it's $1,600. And believe it or not, right behind that in second place, I would actually pick this headphone for gaming uh, over almost anything else. I think the attributes of the sound are actually perfect for a gaming performance for the majority of games. There are a couple games here and there that I might pick other headphones, but as an overall category, especially for kind of a competitive edge, I think I'd be most comfortable using this. And I actually think in certain games, it outperforms the 800S, but the 800S has a more realistic sound, a more real life sound uh, than this does. But this always has that more competitive, uh, fast paced, everything in the picture, kind of no frills type of sound quality that I like. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for my review. I'll leave links to everything I talked about in the description down below. And until the next video, my name's Josh, signing off.